It is party time. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show. It's Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. That's right. It is Monday's Hangover. We're doing it here all over again in the Mothership Studio 22. The Puppet Master Mark, Super Chris Cruz. Let's love Brandon uh, at the helm. Into the nether regions we go. Insanity. My heart is full today. I am just, uh, you know, because I know we're on the winning side. I, I know we are on uh, the right side of history. Uh, we're not right about everything, you know, but... I think people are waking up to a lot of the garbage that's going on out there and, and the deception that's happening. And people are finally, they're just, they're just, they're unashamedly, unapologetically talking about it. They're exposing this stuff. And uh, like we talked about on the show yesterday with Kelly, there are people out there who's re- researching these things. And I am so appreciative of the folks who are, who are bringing the knowledge and the and the and the information to light so that you can equip yourself listen there is no reason whatsoever no reason whatsoever for you to be ill-equipped right now in these days cnn's not going to tell you the truth abc and nbc aren't going to tell you the truth msnbc fox news they're not going to tell you the truth they're going to tell you a slanted deal and and they're going to only expose what they want you to see it's out there do not get bogged down in the, quote, conspiracy theories and the things that sound fanciful. Do the research, folks. Do the research. Find out what's going on and then get your ass involved. Speak out at these city council meetings. Speak out at these school board meetings. You know, I had Alex Stein came and opened. You know, Alex opened for me at the, uh, I don't want to dead name him, so Alexandria Stein uh, he he transitioned right there on stage Sunday night uh, in Fort Worth. He did an incredible job. A lot of times the audience doesn't know quite what to do with him uh, because he, I, he's like a shock jock, but for comedy. And <laughs> But if you listen to his comedy, he makes some excellent points. But here's what I want to talk about. Guys like Alex and Cassidy Campbell, it, it, listen, as bombastic as they are, and God bless them, I love them. I mean, they got balls like church bells. Uh, they're going into these places and they're, they're basically trolling the system and exposing them. They're using a humorous way to get people's attention to expose the system. Uh, I want you to look past the, the hype and the yelling and screaming and the rapping and the fanfare and the smoke and the mirrors. And I want you to see what these guys, guys like that are actually doing. Um, and I'm thankful that they're doing it because they're reminding people that you can get involved too. You don't have to go rap. You don't have to be primetime 99 Alex Stein. But you can go and you can speak. You can take your three-minute time, and you can let your voice be heard. And I want you to do that, folks. Um, Just an update, Uvalde, Texas. Of course, the tragic shooting that happened. uh, uh, Is that two weeks now? That's two weeks. Tuesday is two weeks. Man, time flies. Time is precious. Life is precious. Love your children. Talk to your children. Hug your children. You know, on, on last week's overtime, we talked about the nuclear family. And went into how we got to stop apologizing for the nuclear family. They want to they want to villainize that concept and make it a toxic concept. But let me tell you, moms and dads and kids in the home, it's a beautiful thing. Doesn't always happen quite like that. But you know what? You can still maintain your values and do the right thing. Talk to your kids. Uvalde School Board shuttered uh, Robb Elementary School, which of course was the site of the tragic shooting. And they're not going to punish the police chief, at least at this point. They held a special meeting last Friday where the decision was made for students and staff to never return to the Robb Elementary School. I I think that's wise. I think that's the right move. Uh, Uvalde Consolidated Independent School District Board also took no action against the police chief who failed to confront the school shooter. Um, Not going back to the campus is what they said. Um, and And they shouldn't. Obviously, these kids have been through a traumatic nightmare as well as these teachers and these administrators horrible horrible situation we're still praying um it's not over with this tragedy is still very much alive in our hearts and we're still doing as much as we can to to try to keep the the relevance of this thing there and and again I, the thing that bugs me is again we're, we're having this this gun debate like you know i i sell t-shirts for a living right we, we it's, it's not earth shattering world changing stuff but we we like to put messages on, on t-shirts one of our recent t-shirts that's out has a has a rifle on it and it says come and take it you know it's just an updated version of the old come and take it flag uh the you know the the gonzalez flag of texas and people you know it was out there on social media people say you should be ashamed of yourself i was like I, i'm not i'm, I'm not uh, I'm not ashamed of the Second Amendment. 
shall not be infringed means shall not be infringed. Um, you should be ashamed of not dealing with the mental illness that's pervasive in our country and in our culture across the globe. Uh, we have cheapened human life. Uh, we've said that unborn babies are fetal tissue and protoplasmic blobs, a clump of cells. We've renamed them and called them a fetus, something that can be aborted. The life that's within it can be extinguished 98% of the time for the sake of convenience. There are people who are bragging about having not only multiple, but as many as 20 abortions. And the fact that whether that's true or not, the fact that they are bombastically bragging about this is heinous. I mean, it's an atrocious thing that we have so cheapened life. You've heard me say it before. I say it again. If they found a, quote, clump of cells on Mars, they'd spend trillions upon trillions of dollars trying to protect it. But if it's in a woman's womb, it's easily violated. And it's crazy to me how many people are now saying, you know, I was born in 1971 before my mother had the right to choose. Here's a 50, 51-year-old person who's saying, I wish my mother would have had the right to murder me. I wish wish my mother would have had that choice. You're demented. And the fact that that type of mental illness and that illogical thinking exists is just proof of how much we've devalued life. So now you want to bring in things like tragic shootings. So last weekend, there were 50 shootings, 50 shootings in Chicago alone. We're not talking about that. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, a black man with a gun who was trying to target a doctor went into a medical facility and killed five people, I think it was, four or five. We don't, you know why I don't even know the number? Because the media is not talking about it. The media is not talking about it. It doesn't fit the narrative. It was a black guy. He wasn't, he wasn't a white supremacist. Again, what does Joy Reid say? What do the ladies on The View say? That, that all of this is about white supremacy. And by the way, the guy that went into Uvalde, he wasn't white either. So you, the, the narrative breaks down rather quickly whenever you expose the truth of these scenarios. The issue isn't the gun. The issue is the human heart. The prophet said in the Old Testament, the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. You know, we're taking things that, that, that uh, you know, I came home after a long weekend of traveling, doing, doing shows uh, across Texas, and I came home, and it was amazing, Chris, that none of my guns had hurt anybody what? while I was gone. My rifle, my AR-15, one of them was, was still propped up in the corner of the bedroom. Another one was... Uh, in the closet. The rest were in the safe. Um, they, they hadn't done a single thing all weekend long. So I, I'm thinking maybe I have defective guns. I, the, these guns just aren't out killing people. And you talk about Chicago and immediately people say, oh, well, you know, again, strictest gun laws in America, basically. There's more gun legislation on the books now than ever before in history in America. I, I, can we do better? Yeah, of course we can always do better. But when, when Joe Biden comes out there and says, well, the Constitution and the, the Bill of Rights isn't absolute. Joe, your mind isn't absolute. It, you're, you're off the reservation, dude. And then people say, oh, well, what about the 14th and the 15th and the 16th Amendment? What about these amendments where, you know, may, should we still have slaves? Should blacks not have the right to vote? Should they not be equal citizens? Should women not have the right to vote? No, we added freedoms to the Constitution, you're talking about taking them away. Shall not be infringed means shall not be infringed. So when when we're looking at this debate, let's have the right debate, folks. We're in a tragedy. It's a shame that when those tragedies happen, that it's always going to be politicized. You're going to say about Chicago, you're going to say, well, they have strict gun laws, but they're going over to Indiana and buying the guns. Well, those damn guns ought to be killing people all across the interstate. I mean, why aren't they killing people in Indiana? You know why? Because those aren't the people they want to kill. Those aren't the people they want to shoot. The shoot. The gangbangers aren't aren't hanging out in Gary, Indiana, and Indianapolis. They know they're taking them back to Chicago, and they're doing the violence there. Why? Because it's a people problem. The people are in a, a dispute. The people. The guns aren't disputing. I have never seen two guns have an argument. I I, I just haven't. 
I've never seen a gun declare its political side. But people do it. I, I've never tweet. I've never seen a gun tweet. It tell me how much it hates me and my ideologies, my philosophies, my political beliefs, my outlook on the world, my paradigm, my worldview. Guns don't do that because they're inanimate objects. But what we've done is we've devalued human life to the point where we still don't even want to put the blame on the human. We don't want to put the responsibility on the human because how dare we? How dare we let life take responsibility for the actions that life brings? Got to blame the gun, blame the legislation, blame the law. And I defy any single one of you to give me one piece of legislation or a law that needs to be added This is going to make a difference in these things. Because if they don't have guns, you can take all the guns. Criminals are still going to get the guns. They're still going to get guns. I said this on Twitter. I say it again. America will always defend what it values with guns. Okay? The government has them. Shit, we left. How much did we leave behind in Afghanistan? Everything. Everything. You, You literally armed ISIS with guns. (laughs) <laughs> look what happened what happened let's go back i did not want to go this far into this what happened whenever eric holder and barack obama armed the cartels when fast and furious border patrol agent lost his life they armed the cartels with guns joe biden just armed the enemy isis with guns helicopters tanks all this kind of stuff just left it behind Guns are going to find a way to get in the hands of the wrong people. They're going to. But you have actual uh, lawmakers as well as leaders in the United States of America who are giving the guns to them. So pardon me if I don't pay attention to your hypocrisy when you start coming after law-abiding citizens for engaging in and living by their constitutional rights. They're the law-abiding people. See, as long as we let the lawless make the rules, then you're going to hold the law abiding accountable to the level and the status that the law breaking has created. And I don't think I deserve that because I haven't broken any laws. I haven't hurt anybody. My guns haven't hurt anybody. Right. Let's deal with the mental illness. You, you, you want you want gun control. I want people control. I want to harden schools. I want school control. I want security that's in there. Americans will always defend that which they value with a gun. You can tell what they value based on what surra- our politicians are surrounded by guns. They're surrounded by guns. Our celebrities are surrounded by guns. Our sporting events are surrounded by guns. Our concerts surrounded by guns. Do you know that they actually put snipers up in a loft at large concerts? Yeah, you go watch Luke Bryan and, and back over there, a couple hundred meters. There's a sniper in a nest. You know why? Because they're, they're protecting that event. <laughs> every, every large con- concert you go to, especially outdoor deals, they have a sniper in the nest because they protect that. You know, it's, it's a money-making thing, man. It's a money-making thing, and they want to make sure it stays protected. But your schools have propped open doors. Law enforcement that chooses not to go in at a certain time. Um, (laughs) You know, the the officers that that are supposedly there, you know, we saw in Parkland, didn't go in. Uh, You know, the, the resource officer that was there didn't go in. Cowardly act in that regard. And I and I call it out, man. I call all of this stuff out. We got so many veterans out there that would love to do the job of securing our schools. Take about $9 billion, and we just gave Ukraine all that money. So you know what we could do? Arm their citizens. Let's take about $9 billion of that money we just wasted, quite honestly. And let's pay everybody $70,000 a year, these retired veter- veterans that are trained, people that are used to running towards the gunfire, Because what was it the police at Uvalde said? They said, well, we didn't go in because we might get shot. That's what they said. We don't want to go in because we might get shot. Get the people who are used to running towards the gunfire. Those are hard men, and they're they're out there. Pay them. They'll do the job. 
Hey, in these politically charged times, conservatives need to vote with their dollars. Minutemen Coffee is a great place to start. The coffee for American patriots. Constitutionally based family owned companies steadfast in their belief that all freedom loving Americans deserve products from companies that share their beliefs without fear of cancellation or retaliation from the woke mob. Minutemen Coffee believes in your constitutional rights. They put their money where their mouth is. They send you a copy of the Constitution in every order so you can bring this important conversation to the coffee table and educate the next generation of constitutional patriots. This amazing coffee is small batched, handcrafted from family farms across the globe, roasted to perfection and delivered fresh to you i've tasted a lot of coffee a lot of different kinds but this is good stuff minute Men coffee hits the mark when it comes to taste and aroma you're going to love it as much as i do with minute Men coffee you're going to get a full pound of coffee for less than most companies charge for a cup uh, they got a special going that if you buy three bags of the heritage roast add trader joe to your cart it's free as well as free shipping check them out if you don't want that deal just use offer code chad i spell it chad at checkout 15 percent off your order minutemencoffee.com Wake up without going woke. We'll be right back. Our next guest is a legend. Yeah, I said it. He's a legend. He's also a friend, and I'm happy to have him. He is the author of the new book, Unmuzzle Me, by Brave Books. Uh, Brave Books doing a fantastic job. You're following him on social media uh, under the name DC Drano. Rogan O'Hanley joins us right now. Rogan, how are you, my friend? I'm doing well, Chad. How are you? I'm doing good, man. You've had all kind of changes going on in your life, and I, I just keep up with your world through social media at this point. You're a busy dude, man. How you you keeping up with everything? Yeah, you know, I'm uh, trying to keep up as well. Was just up at <laughs> Tucker Carlson's place in Maine doing a big interview, and I uh, was just you know fortunate enough to be invited to a Jason Aldean party in Nashville. So, Look but you. what I'm most excited about is this book. Uh, you know what we're seeing in the media in the world today is a in uh, uh, toxicity in our children's education and you know everyone knows i love to complain about the problems but sometimes i step up and actually take action in ways that i think i can and so this is uh, something I'm, I'm very proud to have partnered with Brave Books on. You know, Brave Books is doing a phenomenal job. Uh, their marketing is top notch. I mean, they are top tier in, in what they're doing. And, and of course, as a reminder, you know, these, these are children's books. These are children's books with a message and a point. And when you get it, you get the whole package with the map and all the interactive stuff that's there. I love it. I stay on them all the time. I'm like, you, you guys need a character with a cowboy hat. Let me write a book. Uh, but, you know, and, and let me go back into this. So, you know, a lot of times we do the social media gig and people don't realize we had a past life, too. You you were an attorney uh, and there's a lot going on in that skull of yours and you're, you're calling these things out. How did you kind of approach this, you know, to take what you do on an intellectual level and with the memes and just the thought provoking stuff, as well as oftentimes the humor? How, how did you approach doing this book? Well, so you're right. I used to be a Hollywood entertainment lawyer in california until about 2017 when president trump got elected i realized you know i couldn't publicly support him and so i made the account dc drano and it you know got to a point where i felt like i was living a double life and i had to mm. pick one or the other it was growing and i was kind of doing it anonymously and so i decided to leave everything behind and go fight for uh you know on the digital sphere a country that i thought was being uh, invaded by Marxism. I think we have a socialist Marxist insurgency, authoritarian, if you will, uh, in our government, in our institutions. And, you know, it's enough of sitting on the couch. We got to get up and do something. And so what I love doing as an attorney, one of the reasons I went to law school, even though I didn't practice this specifically, is I love the Constitution and our mm. constitutional rights. So, you know, one of the things we need to do is pass on those freedoms and the knowledge of those freedoms to the next generation. And that's what this book does on Muzzle Me, Please. So you're right, it's top tier you know, quality, uh, the, the illustrations, the storyline, and then the interactive games at, at, at the back, there's a lot of digital stuff. You scan the QR code, you get these cool uh, adventures to do with your kids. And you know, this book focuses on free speech. They've got mm -hmm. other books that focus on the constitution, medical freedom, loving your family, loving God. So, uh, you know, just very proud to be a contributor to this. 
And I will say that the owner of the company, the one who started it, Dr. Trent Talbot, former medical doctor in Texas, by the way, mm -hmm. and he saw Cuties, not actually watched it, but he saw that it was on Netflix and he was looking at his daughters. He says, I got to do something, man. Yeah. So a year and a half ago, he started this publishing company and now they've got like 10 to 12 books. And President Trump just even talked about the entire book series because it was censored on Google. So you know they're doing something right. You know they're over the target. And it's something I think that's actually going to help save America at least just a little bit. Yeah, and it's a good model what they're doing. Uh, I know uh, uh, Jack Posobiec has a book. Ashley St. Clair has a book. The Hodge Twins, Missy Robertson, various others. And so I'm happy that – and congratulations as well that, that you now have, now have one. You know, we're looking at these things like a parallel economy, and we see what's happening with Disney and the grooming culture and this hypersexualization of our children. This is, I, think, I think that Brave Books is doing this and doing it with excellence – uh, and giving parents, uh, as well as educators, um, whether they're doing homeschooling or co-oping or whatever, but an entertaining, uh, very creative way to communicate these uh, these concepts that are out there. And they're, they're unapologetic with it. So my hat's off and uh, what they're doing at Brave Books is phenomenal. You... Um, you, you know, would, would, you, would you approach a project like this or any project that you're doing, you know, do you, do you engage trying to... How do I ask this question? Are you trying to change the mind of the of the person that you're immediately responding to? Because I know you're like me. You catch a lot of crap day in and day out. Or is it the person that's listening into the conversation? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you're just putting enough yeah. out there, and hopefully people are get, catching it by osmosis, maybe. Yeah, well, I saw, I saw a hater say, well, aren't you just trying to groom the children now? I'm like, no, I'm trying to actually provide education about timeless – uh, God-given rights, the freedom to speak. It's its the First Amendment. It's enshrined in our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, and it's something that needs to be passed along and defended to future generations. The radicals out there, uh, you know, doing the drag queen strip teases and CRT, teaching kids to be racist in schools. You know, we've seen a grassroots uprising of parents across this country. They've realized they have to get involved they're going to the school boards. They're getting elected as school board members now, especially in Texas. You guys have really uh, picked it up there. And you know they're actually going to save our public schools from being indoctrination centers and turning them back into education centers. So again, this goes back to the, the Marxist insurgency. And so we're on the march. There's a lot of people doing this. Daily Wire has some books. You know, we've got brave books. They, um, like I said, President Trump was talking about mm -hmm. it. He's aware there's a book. The Plot Against the King, which talks about how, you know, they spied on him in a very fun way. But all this <laughs> is, is the truth about what freedom of speech is. And we're not trying to force this upon anyone. This is something that when you actually learn about it, you you put, you prioritize it. It's something that sticks with you. You know, uh, Charlie Kirk, I think, said it's not that kids in college are opposed to conservatism. It's that they're not exposed to mm. it. And this provides at least one avenue to expose kids to the freedoms that make this the greatest country in the history of the world. And, you know, it, it's it's something where you don't really have to. The truth is a lion. Once you let it out, it does all the work for you. And that's yeah. all we're doing here, talking about the truth. And then people can decide, do they want freedom of speech or do they want censorship? And a lot of people generally choose freedom of speech yeah unmuzzle me please is the name of the book it's by brave books you need to not only get rogan's book but you need to get all of the series you really do and then keep up with everything they're doing i follow them on instagram to kind of keep abreast of what's happening with them of course i'm in contact with them as well um but so what you're telling me and, and i love what you said there because educating uh you know choosing to educate is not grooming that's that's not what's going on here and again, you're not forcing any. It's not like Rogan is going to put on a dress and some lipstick and go to the library and do uh, reading time for Unmuzzle Me, Please. Although I, 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 there's a weird part of me wants to see that happen. Not to the kids. <laughs> not to the kids. Just <laughs> anyway. Uh, Rogan, I appreciate what you're doing, man. What's next for you? What all's going on? <laughs> um, well, like I said, the Tucker Carlson interview should be coming out in the next week or so. Really awesome, no holds barred. We talked about everything, election fraud, vaccine mandates, Ukraine. Um, and then, you know, what the future holds, I'm actually gonna be working on a media website. 
mm. to start, you know, curating and putting up what I think is the news. Um, so that's probably the next big step, but that's going to take some time. That'll be dcdrainer.com. But in the meantime, uh, you know, go to bravebooks.com. Get yourself one of these books, and I look forward to seeing a Chad Prather uh, <laughs> cowboy hat character soon enough riding around uh, taking care of business in, in, in Brave Land. Here. I love it. I'm not putting on a dress either. Rogan O'Hanley, <laughs> follow him as well on social media at DC Drano, buddy. Look forward to talking to you soon. We'll be looking forward to that Tucker Carlson interview. Take care, man. Thank you, Chad. Take care. Hey, friends, when I see what's happening in the world today, I do get very concerned. The system crashes. Everybody's going to suffer except for the folks who wisely invested in long-term emergency food storage. Just a fact. If you, want, if you don't want to be a victim of what's coming, I strongly urge you to go to my website, preparewithchad.com. You're going to find a special deal where you can save $150 on a three-month emergency food kit from my friends at My Patriot Supply. This food kit contains a wide variety of delicious meals, enough to last three solid months per person. Plus, these meals provide more than 2,000 calories a day to keep up your strength and energy like you need it. Listen, this kit is something every American family will wish they had. Go to preparewithchad.com. Claim your $150 savings per kit. Your order ships fast and free it arrives in unmarked boxes for privacy prepare with chad.com i want you to go there prepare with chad.com we'll be right back welcome back folks uh it is that time where i must wax eloquent folks I give up. I just give up. Every time I think to myself that it is a vicious and cruel stereotype to invoke the title of Florida man in the wake of some act of absurdity, every time I rise up on my heels in a fit of justice-fueled peak to try to defend my Southern brethren's sacred intellectual honor, I am nevertheless snatched up along with my defeat from the jaws of victory. Let me just start with this quote from the title of an article on The Blaze. Florida driver receives oral sex, slams head on into FedEx truck. Mm. Now, if that isn't headline news, I don't know what is. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, there's absolutely positively no way that Chad can wax philosophical for a few minutes about this topic. It's just going to be a bunch of dick jokes. <laughs> Fear not, my friends. I am a student sitting at the knee of the muse itself, a practitioner of the sacred art of elocution, a timely sage for the timeless age. I can do both. We all know that friends don't let friends drive drunk, but apparently in this busy era, we can substitute swiping left and right for love with swerving left and right for love. Now, everyone listening to and watching this other than the children, who probably shouldn't be, falls into one of two camps. You've either done it or you thought about it. <laughs> Modesty and possibly a healthy fear of the criminal justice system forbids that I weigh in too heavily on the personal side of this issue. And lack of disclosure might well be the better part of valor. But let's all view this beautiful tragedy unfold from the first relatively equal playing field. We've all thought about it. So I can't judge these people too harshly, and neither can you. You can't do it. Don't do it. But it gets better because they were both naked at the time they made contact with the FedEx truck. <laughs> that detail is a little harder to get past because uh, that's what crazy people do. Now, I should point out that it's okay to laugh about this whole situation because everybody survived. Uh, it would be okay to laugh at it if they hadn't. <laughs> but you might have to ask Jesus to forgive you later. I think Florida boy got his junk hurt a little bit in the collision, but, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Uh, now, it's at this point that you're probably expecting me to moralize over this situation. Uh, talk about how far down the tubes our society has gone, that something like this would even pop into someone's head to do, much less that they would actually carry it out or risk the lives of everyone they passed in the act. But nah, I'm not going to take that route. Not with this. This is a, a Florida man and a Florida woman doing the wild and crazy crap God apparently made them to do. You and I both know this, that if they'd found a hogtied alligator in the trunk after this, you wouldn't be surprised. You know that if these two turned out to be meth kingpins celebrating the provision of their product to their you know one millionth customer, you wouldn't be surprised. And you know that if the driver of the FedEx truck turned out to be their long-lost son delivering meth-addicted alligators to a local veterinarian for substance abuse treatment, you wouldn't be surprised at that either. Florida man and Florida woman 
are no reflection whatsoever on the overall downslide of the rest of the country, folks. They're their own unique phenomenon placed here by the good Lord so that we might be entertained. And if you don't think that story's entertaining, I suggest you lighten up a bit. Loosen your buttholes. That gets you in a whole different kind of wreck. Maybe uh, don't lighten up as much as Florida man, but hey, lighten up. Wow. You know, all I can say is he came and went at the same time. <laughs> oh, a head on collision. The man almost got uh, Lorena Bobbitt. Bobbitted. He almost got John Bobbitted. <sighs> Hawaii man refuses. <laughs> From Florida to Hawaii. Hawaii man refuses to surrender his license plate. It says FCK BLM. (laughs) I simply love people with brass balls. Uh, He refuses to surrender his vanity license plate that says FCK BLM. I'm sure you can put together what that means. Uh, He's defied the city government's order to stop driving around the vehicle with the anti-Black Lives Matter gesture. Uh, He's also got a um, he's also got a sticker on his red Pontiac Trans Am, baby. That says Trump 2024 because F you. I want to know this man. He lives on an island. Make him the God right there. I love it. Uh, He says, I'm not taking it down. They said that FCK and FKN are prohibited in the state. The license plate was recalled and the owner was ordered to surrender it. However, the driver still allegedly driving with the same personalized plate. Uh, nearly a year later, despite the warnings from the city. You know what? I would go through every toll booth there was just so they'd take a picture of it. At that point, I want everybody to see it. Um, viewers of the TV station claimed that they had seen the car driving around Oahu despite the driver's registration and inspection sticker reportedly being expired. This dude is Smokey and the Bandit. Like, like he is literally an outlaw in Hawaii. Who knew this level of redneckedness exists on the big island? Uh, no, but he's not giving it up. Um, not going to let him renew. This guy went whole hog, dude. He went all the way into this thing. I mean, this guy's having a, a luau party. He, he won't do the registration. He won't, he won't register the title. He won't do any of that stuff uh, because he can't renew it as long as that license plate's on there. Everything's expired, uh, and they're able to cite the vehicle uh, if it's, you know, if it's being operated on the roads. But, hey, he's in a Pontiac Trans Am, baby. Can't nobody catch him. <laughs> F-C-K-B-L-M. Uh, he's just keeping it on private property. That's what's funny. He's got it parked, and the police can't go on the private property to apprehend anything. You go, good sir. You go with your bad self right there. And, by the way, 20, Trump 2024 because F you. I love this guy. Uh, I got a couple more stories I want to get to, but before that, let's take care of your skin. There's only one week left Virginia Cell's summer clearance sale. Now, save over 60% off Virginia Cell's most popular package at genucell.com. You can order it right now and get Genucell's Dark Spot Corrector to visibly reduce those pesky dark sunspots for free. The Genucell Dark Spot Corrector uses special peptides to visibly reduce the appearance of the dark spots, age spots, and yes, even the sun spots that summer leaves behind. Genucell, they've been family owned and operated since day one. They know that times are tough for all of us, and that's why they have not and will not raise prices on their world-class skincare. Results are real. Millions of amazing Americans, including myself, are in love. I use it every day. Genucell guarantees results or your money back. Sign up for Genucell's best-in-class rewards program at checkout for an extra 10% off your order and receive a complimentary gift set. So go to Genucell.com. That's G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash watch chat. Enter promo code watch chad at checkout for extra summer savings right now every most popular package includes genius cells immediate effects treatment for results in as little as 12 hours go to genius cell.com slash watch chad that's genius cell.com slash watch chad and we'll be right back 
Yep. Head first into a FedEx truck. Ah. Uh, wow. Um I'm living my life all wrong. You know, if you go if you go to that blaze.com and you see that story and you see the picture, I don't know if that's like a drone shot or what it is. You see the dude laid out on the street. It's a good thing that girl didn't choke to death. You know, and I'm offended because it's Pride Month. Why wasn't it two dudes? Slipping, Florida. You're slipping. Racist. Makes me want to eat grits. Police find a baby sleeping in a locked room with 500 fentanyl pills, pound of methamphetamine after a traffic stop. Um... Yavapai County, I think I got that right. Uh, I think that's uh, uh, Prescott, right? Is that Arizona? I don't know. Anyway, um, police performed a traffic stop on a 31-year-old girl, lady, uh, said she was excessively nervous, so a canine police dog was used to investigate around the woman's vehicle. That's when the officer discovered 200 uh, fentanyl pills in her backpack and more pills in her shoe. Uh, so they searched the woman's residence, knocked on the home, announced their entrance into the house. Once inside, they said they discovered an 18-month-old child sleeping in a locked room with 500 pills of fentanyl and a pound of methamphetamine. Do you understand how? Look at look at these citizens. Look at look at these folks. Um, this may be the biggest blessing in that baby's life. Um, let's get the baby out of that house. Look at these people. Yeah, don't send them to Dallas. They'll wind up at a drag show. Uh, don't take the babies. Um, child abuse. I mean, you know how much, how many people that much fentanyl can kill. I, I, people underestimate fentanyl. They, they, they. I don't think they realize there are tens of thousands of deaths that are happening. This fentanyl thing. I hear stories almost every week of somebody who's connected to somebody or somebody's family. They, you know, they they took something and. A friend gave him a pill, an Oxycontin or, you know, whatever. And that's it. That's it. Um, uh, overdose rates are up 700% in Oregon after the state decriminalized the possession of hard drugs. 700%. <laughs> you know... This anarchy thing doesn't really work. I, listen, I'm a law and order guy. I understand. Because you know, you know what will happen. People say, oh, but you, you want the drug laws, but you don't want laws for guns. We have laws for guns. There's a big one that says, don't go shoot people. You're breaking the law. You, you can't just go murder people. There is a law for that. That's a criminal act. But when you decriminalize stuff like this, what do you think people are going to do? I mean, what do you think they're going to do? You make it readily available to them and there's no penalty to it? There's no consequences? What's going to happen? Uh, Oregon. And you know, Oregon, I, somebody came to my show on Friday and they uh, moved here from uh, Portland. I, I've done one show in my career in Portland. Never again. Really? No. Ne no, dude. Just never again. The place is, it's Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, it's off the reservation. Off the reservation, bro. Not my tribe. Let me just say, it ain't my tribe. And Oregon is a beautiful state. It is gorgeous. You know, I've done some shows in Eugene. I may go back to Eugene. I don't know. It, it, all of it's off the reservation at this point. But Portland, nah, bro. Uh, I am going back to the Seattle area, though. I'm going to Everett. My buddy Curtis, he's got the theater up there in uh, Everett. We've decided October 28th, I will be making my fifth appearance i think at that theater there in everett washington birthplace of the one and only glenn beck that's right uh everett washington that that little that little group of remnant patriots up there holding out just north of seattle so looking forward to that um 
But yeah, 700% increase in overdose, which brings me to my next point, kids. Don't do crack. Little uh, water boy, water boy reference right there. Uh, you got a TikTok? We didn't do one yesterday. Let me see something. I'll give you one second. That's a great question, sweetheart. Um, so binary is just a word that basically just means two. It's a fancy word for two. They use it with computers when they're coding uh, for computer programs. Um, and if you hear the word binary, it basically just means that there's two sides. So a lot of people think that gender is something that's binary, meaning that there's just boys and there's just girls. But a lot of people don't feel that way. Some people feel like they might fall in the middle of being a boy and a girl. They might feel like they're both a boy and a girl. They might feel like they're neither. There's lots of different ways that people might feel. And when they feel that way, it's just called non-binary because it means that they don't fit in what people think is boy or girl. Hope that helps. So did you catch the one word or phrase that Squeaky kept using right there? They don't feel. They may not feel. You know, if I'm wiring a house and I don't feel like this wire should go to that, uh, that part of the box there into that fuse, you know, something in the house ain't going to work or it could get dangerous. So we're actually trying to justify crossing wires based on how we feel. All right. And I, I don't know what's in the water. Like maybe Alex Jones has been right all this time about the gay frogs in the water. Except now it's just turning us into whatever gender or sexual orientation or identity. I'm telling you, Alex Jones. <laughs> did you see the meme I put up the other day? I ran a meme, I just did. two pictures of me and Alex. Yeah, I did. And before we go to commercial break, Chad, one of the reasons why I wanted to have this non-binary thing on is because <laughs> she reminds me of this character. Doesn't <laughs> she look exactly... Well, sorry. Doesn't this... I don't know. Doesn't this two look like they came from the same mother? So, so and, and Smeagol slash Gollum is a perfect example of somebody that's binary. They are two people. They're two natures. There was the Hobbit, and then there was the Smeagol. Gollum. Uh, I can't figure it out anymore. I got a wiener. I'm going to leave it with that. I got a mediocre, mediocre standard issue, Caucasian wiener. And I love grits. We'll be right back. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, got a few things coming up. Going to be in Henrietta, Henrietta, Oklahoma, Saturday. Uh, Highway to Henrietta, which, of course, is the uh, fundraiser for the local fundraiser that Troy Aikman does every year for his hometown, Henrietta, Oklahoma. Blake Shelton, Pat Green, Stoney LaRue, Wade Bowen, us, we're going to be there. And uh, we're going to have a good day. We're going to have a fun time. But then the week after that, we're going to be in Shawnee, Oklahoma at the Ritz. And, um, yeah, come check us out. Watchchad.com has all the fun stuff. July 9th, going to be in Fort Smith, Arkansas. We're coming back to Fort Smith, going to have a good time. Then we got some good stuff coming up. We're going to be at Jackie's Eyes House uh, on the 14th of July down in Kima, Ala, uh, Texas. I'm sorry. And then Goliad, Texas, of course. We're going to be there as well. Watchchad.com has the stuff. Don't forget to subscribe to Blaze TV. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. Talk to you then. Bye.